Okay, so finally, Oppo has unveiled their Oppo Reno 12 series 5G here in the Philippines. And yes, it consists of two smartphones, the regular Oppo Reno 12 and the Oppo Reno 12 Pro 5G that we'll be talking about today. And this time, it's not just the cameras and the aesthetics that they are focusing, but the artificial intelligence. But of course, the question remains if this new smartphone by Oppo is actually worth getting. So let's start unboxing this new Oppo AI device. The color of the unit that I got is called Nebula Silver that has a wavy optical finish and personally, it looks more purple than silver. We got the paperwork, syempre yung panundot natin, and the clear jelly case that personally for me looks like a Rimowa suitcase. Actually, I think it's not just me. I know kayo din, ito yung una nyong iisipin because of its vertical stripes. We got the Superbook power brick and the USB-C cable. Gladly, yung units that we have here in the Philippines comes with a power brick. In other countries, wala na siyang power brick just like what we get from flagship devices and mas manipis na yung box niya. <laughs> So in terms of its design and build, how much do I actually like it? You know me guys, when it comes to design and aesthetics, I like to describe it detailed. Especially for those people who like ordering online and cannot go personally to malls. When you pick up the device, you will immediately notice how light it is. At the same time, it is also stylish which is the usual case with the Reno series in the past. One of the reasons why it's lightweight is because it's mostly entirely built with plastic. Plastic frame and plastic back. So yes, again, it's nice and thin. It won't weigh you down like the normal big smartphones these days. At the same time, yung camera bump niya doesn't protrude that much. There is also no 3.5mm headphone jack, but of course, there is a USB-C Port for your connectivity. The body is also IP65 rated, which means it can endure water and dust comfortably. Or in other terms, it is resistant to splashes. So meaning, guys, wag yung ilulubog yung smartphone na to. Now flipping the phone over, we got here, of course, the display. Why? Because we are getting here the best of both worlds. The display remains perfectly flat. But the corners are a bit curved. Meaning, unlike other curved displays out there, wala siyang visual distortions or you won't even feel that the display is actually curved. But to be honest, it's not entirely new. Nakita ko na rin to sa ibang mid-range devices. But I like that Oppo did not make it fully curved display. At the same time, the material used on this device is actually a Gorilla Glass Vectus. Two, which is the same material used on flagship devices nowadays. Particularly, it has 6.7 inches of AMOLED display. In all honesty, I have no complaints about its screen. Sharp enough siya and fluid enough at 120Hz refresh rate. It's also reasonably color accurate and at the same time, it also supports HDR 10 plus. And speaking of the refresh rate, I noticed on its settings, meron na siyang app-specific refresh rate. So depending on your chosen application, pwede kayong mamili between 60, 90, and 120 hertz. Lalo na if may mga specific applications kayo na madalas na ginagamit. And at the same time, to save more battery. Now, on to its cameras. It features a triple camera setup and yes, all of it are useful. A 50 megapixels main sensor, an 8 megapixels ultra wide, and a 50 megapixels telephoto camera. By the way, the selfie camera is also 50 megapixels. Actually, I won't say this phone is super unique. It's not like it's the very first phone on its price point na nagkaroon ng dedicated high megapixel telephoto camera. So yes, it's not technically unheard of, but what's new is how they implemented 
AI. More on that later. Actually, it's a well-rounded camera. Yung 50 megapixels main sensor niya has a 1 over 1.95 inch. Images are vibrant and it has good dynamic range. I'm not saying it's perfect but most of the time it produces clear, crisp, and reliable images. At the same time, it does a decent job with night mode. It's usable and has more color and detail unlike the regular camera in low light. Now, the 50 megapixels telephoto camera, I wouldn't say it's super outstanding. Medyo nabitan lang ako kasi two times lang yung optical zoom niya. So, you can also get five times hybrid zoom shots. It's also detailed but it's not comparable to the shots I was able to get from the two times telephoto lens. Now, the ultra wide, ito feeling ko yung pinaka weakest part ng camera setup niya. It could have been better siguro if they made it at least 12 megapixels man lang. Actually, yung saturation level nitong ultra wide is lower talaga at mapapansin nyo yun when we put it side by side with its main camera. Medyo noisy din, especially in low light conditions. Again, it's usable but if you need more detail, mabibitin talaga kayo sa kanya. But onto the good news part, they were able to make the selfie camera really good. It's really capable guys na ma-capture yung detail. Again, because of having a high pixel count, at the same time, this also has an autofocus. Now, onto the AI Eraser 2.0 and AI Studio specifically. These two new AI functions on the Oppo Reno 12 series are the most useful one for me. Again, I'm not saying these features are new. We've seen this from Samsung, Google Pixel phones. But now, we are finally seeing them on mid-range devices and hopefully in the long run halos lahat na ng smartphones ultimo entry level devices ay magkaroon. For the AI Studio, this allows you to turn any of your photos in the gallery into a digital avatar of your choice. Actually, there is a lot to choose from. Papa, babae man yan or lalaki. Kahit ano pa yan, you can choose any of your photos and turn them into styles like professional, futuristic, playful, travel, and more. Now, for the AI Eraser 2.0, this is perfect if your photos have unwanted people or objects in the frame. You can either edit it using the smart lasso, paint over, or remove people. But do take note, this requires internet connections. But at least the good thing is we don't need to rely on the third-party applications anymore to achieve yung mga cool photos na nauuso ngayon at the same time to edit out yung mga unwanted objects or people sa inyong mga photos. Now lastly, since this is a camera-centric phone, how about the video capability? Actually, yung main camera niya guys is capable to shoot 4K at 30 FPS. Sadly, for its price, it doesn't exceed at 60 FPS. At the same time, yung ultra-wide camera niya only shoots at 1080p. Again, probably because na rin of the lower megapixel. Anyway, since we are already talking about AI, let's talk about the software. Personally, I find its skin running on the Android 14 a solid enough interface. Wala rin ako nakita or na-experience na stutter sa UI niya from the past few weeks I've been using this device. Yun nga lang, hindi talaga may iwasan ang dami niyang bloatware. Especially nung pagkakuha ko ng device, I had to delete a lot of applications. Now, there are two things I would like to point out sa mga bagong AI features niya aside from the photo editing. One is the beacon link. This enables device-to-device -device voice calls using Bluetooth at a distance of up to 200 meters, even without an internet and signal. Second is the AI recording summary. So if you have voice notes, especially, for example, if you are in a class and you recorded something, the Reno 12 Pro will give you the summary of what you recorded. So far, nakakatotlong beses na akong testing sa kanya and personally, I find it accurate naman. Next is of course, performance and battery life. The Oppo Reno 12 Pro 5G is powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 7300 chipset. Again, this is somewhat a new chipset, which is power efficient. Personally, wala akong problema sa chipset na to. It's perfect for most everyday tasks. 
calling, messaging, browsing, reading, and personally, I had no issues of lag or slowdown. I think my only issue is that mababa lang yung chipset for its price point. For example, the same chipset can be found on other smartphones that cost less than half the amount. But again, like in terms of gaming, it responded reasonably well, even up to 60 FPS. I think the good news is that medyo generous lang yung amount na binigay ng brand when it comes to storage, which is again, 512 gig. Siguro sobrang balance na nito kung medyo mas capable processor yung nilagay nila, tapos kahit 256 gig of storage lang pwede na. So yes, I can definitely say it can game, but it's not for people who are looking for a performance-centric smartphone. Now, finally, on to the battery life. Actually, this is equipped with the standard 5,000 mAh of capacity. Halos 14 to 16 hour of moderate usage yung nakuha namin sa kanya. Actually, I'm pretty surprised considering that this phone is thin. This device also comes closer to smartphones I'm used to using that are capable of a day and a half. Anyway, this means this smartphone can handle long gaming sessions without having to worry guys about the battery running too low. In terms of charging naman, it is capable of 80 watts, in which it took us 53 minutes of 0 to 100%. May reverse wired charging capability din ito, but this is not capable of wireless charging. So if I were to rate the battery and even the charging score, for me, it's 4 out of 5. Now on to my final thoughts and to answer the very first question I ask you guys on this video. Is it actually worth getting? For 34,999 pesos, personally, I think it is. It's a stylish smartphone with some impressive AI features and camera performance. Lalong lalo na if may magandang deal sila when it comes to pre-order or kaya naman may mga discount sila on their Oppo retail stores. So kung medyo passionate gamer ka, you wouldn't find this enough. Although again, yung chipset niya, alam kong bago siya, pero I wouldn't say it's the best chipset you can get sa price point niya. However, again, if you're not that into gaming, everything really falls into place. I personally find it one of the best mid-range devices in its class. Anyway, that's basically it. If may mga additional questions pa kayo about Oppo's newest Reno 12 Pro 5G, let me know. Let's talk about it.